oh, okay. I'm not like a man no. when people have said, you know, give the burden on it. I'm not really like a man. I just, and I've got loads of feminine energy too. Mm. I just think I have extremes of both. Yeah. And they come out in different ways. Yeah. And I'm really feminine. Like, because people are like, no, you're feminine. I'm like, no, I know, I am, innit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but put Hello. me in the right Hello. thing. And I'm like, yeah, like, I have toxic masculinity yeah. <laughs> in the right context. Killer, killer. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. It's an early morning. Serves you all right. Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you need to be. Yeah, it is. 300 plus episodes, what do you want? You don't want to be anywhere else. Central London. Um, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everybody's got the television app. Yeah? Some fundamental movements are being made. Uh, so yeah, jump on that. Free download from the app store. Uh, we're in the house of a very old friend of mine. And I don't mean that in age. I mean that in time spent. We've had many junctures, many... Uh, Many cornerstones in our lives and careers, and we're talking we're, late nineties. Yeah, we're talking late night, we're, and you we're hear the sultry voice. This is Jazz Kahina, <laughs> one of the main contributors in my in my mind of uh, MC uh, versatilities in the UK. And furthermore, oh, thank you, an awesome, awesome character yes. in the scene. How are you, darling? Oh, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I knew there was going to be a long one. This is going to be a long conversation right now. Man, we could be here all day, all day, yeah. and then some. I've still got that morning bass in my voice. Yeah, no. Lucky for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's my EQs out the window for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good luck with that one, curls. <laughs> it has been a minute, hasn't it, darling? I mean, there's been some real moments, and I'm, I'm very keen to share on my to, to the public out there because um, I think your story and journey matches mine in so many ways. Do you think? 100%. Okay. Because every, mm. every time something significant happens, jazz is there. It's true, yeah. I get you're right. We're that's why we always see each other everywhere because yeah. we're just there, isn't it? Yeah. We're just part of the we're part of the furniture. You're the biggest fan of hip hop. The biggest. <laughs> Talk to him about your love for the cultures and love for the for the, the all corners of the of the Do you know it's funny because I don't feel that way. Um and I have to remind myself you don't have to be a hip hop nerd to be a big hip hop fan. Because mm. sometimes I feel like my knowledge doesn't match my passion. Um, and I think maybe it's the same for a lot of people. Um, I guess in some interviews where you feel a bit imposter syndrome because you're like, oh, I haven't heard that classic album or like I can't recite all these facts. But like, I suppose when you're growing up in that age where there wasn't that much like access to music, you do end up focusing maybe on less um acts mm. so like i did find hip-hop quite young um probably like 11 or 12 or something and it was like the beastie boys and a bit of older stuff like public enemy and that mm. um and i don't really know how it managed to just get in my brain i wanted to do everything i've always wanted to do everything i like the look of mm. and i like the look of graph i wanted to do graph I like the look of hip hop. I want to do that. I like basketball. I like skateboarding. Just like anything I like the look of, I needed to turn my hand at it. So mm -hmm. I was a bit of a kind of teenager that was just trying to do all these different things to like, just like, I'm a, what's the word? Um, I'm, I'm not somebody that's happy to sit back and, and watch things. Mm -hmm. Like I need to get involved in it. I'm a participator, like big time. Do you, you know what? You just said something of an imposter syndrome. And I have to be really honest. I'm kind of with you. I feel like often some of those biggest albums that your, our peers often mm. go, what, you haven't heard that? It's like, <laughs> I don't need to buy the record. I heard it a trillion times when I went to every single club night ever. Yeah. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the other thing is that I for, I'll i forget the names of things and yeah, stuff. Yeah, me too. And then like, I'll hear it and be like, oh, yeah, of course I know that. Yeah. But and, like, and these things, they're kind of embedded in you, but you're not necessarily very good at regurgitating it in a kind of like, mm. almost like a kind of uni-educated way. And I really <laughs> respect people that can do that, by the way. Like, I'm yeah. like, wow, this person's got like an encyclopedic knowledge. Yeah, or, like, pick up the hardcore. That's core. really cool. But we mustn't let ourselves feel like we're lesser participants in hip hop just because we haven't, we can't kind of like uh, lay recite it, the bars. Yeah, of, lay yeah. it out in such a kind of 
Mm. Yeah, like logical, factual way. Like I'm a very passionate person. Like, one of my favorite artists was DMX, for example. Mm. And I know he's not particularly revered in a like lyricist wordplay, whatever way. I mean, he is revered, don't get me wrong. But like for me, like music's very tied to my emotions. Mm. And I know that can mean that my opinions and knowledge and stuff like that isn't like as... Chronological or in yeah, a... Yeah, or even sh- like popular. Mm. But I don't necessarily think that that has a lesser value yeah. that my emotions are so involved in it because that's the whole fucking point. That's the whole point of it that is, is that the it whole affects point. you and you react to it. Yeah. So like you can all be very cool and know everything, but like how much did it make you feel like, yeah. not that I'm trying to take it away from anyone else, but yeah, the fact that like, I don't like, I can't explain how DMX made me feel. Mm-hmm. Like when I listened to DMX, I felt like I wasn't alone and how alone I felt. Like Ooh. I used to think, why do I relate to this guy? You know, I'm not, I'm not like flipping on crack <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. But it was because I could hear. Was him. he on crack? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh shit! I, hope. I think he had. No, no, no yeah. there was a stint. I don't think he was towards the end. Mm. But I would. Yeah. But he had, you know, he had very challenging upbringing, and uh, maybe I did in other ways. But like, it's 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 the raw emotion that you can hear from another artist, and it and it makes you feel not alone when you feel that low. You're like raw this person sounds worse than me or yeah. there there's something wrong with them and i feel like there's something wrong with me and then you just connect on Connects that that way and sometimes that can mean more than wow that bar was sick or mm. you know what i mean even yeah. though obviously as you know me i'm a, someone that likes lyricism and wordplay yeah i don't really hold it above that in a way mm. but i mean it's a mixture it's an it's a um it's a, a means to Hip hop is like the it, it's more than the new norm now. It's so integrated. It's it's intrinsic. This transfer in in society that's you know moved into grime and drill and the, you know the the slang, the lingo, the you know all of that is part of our our DNA. Um, you mm. you what you're saying, and I'm kind of with it because I feel it and I've I've interpreted it. You you interpret it your own way. Yeah. But it's in your society. It's in your social bubble. It's like mm. if your mate is spinning hip hop. Then you're going to be in hip hop. Yeah. It's, and and if you're if someone like DMX resonates with you and connects with you, and he happens to be hip hop, then that's awesome too. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes, and also it's subculture too. I think mm. if people, subculture means a lot to people that don't feel feel rejected, that, mm. that do feel rejected by mm. the mainstream. Mm. Um, and I don't mean oh we're all losers and don't touch my stuff, but it is a bit like that sometimes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where you're like well subculture is almost like a fam family for people that just didn't get on with what we felt like we were supposed to mm. i think um i feel like i feel like i i'm counterculture and i'm subculture like mm. i was talking to somebody the other day and you know when you know when they hype up a movie yeah and everyone's fucking going on about the movie yeah. oh the <laughs> fucking movie buy the movie get the popcorn, see the movie, buy the merchandise movie. And it's like, I'm not in the movie. Yeah. Until I'm ready to be into the movie. Yeah. And if you overhype the movie, I'm going to fuck the movie off. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit like that too. Yeah. I am a bit guilty of that. Um, and I think it gives that desire to like be a bit away from everything. Yeah. Like I don't want to be part of everybody's thing. I want a smaller group. <laughs> I want a smaller sub, I want a smaller like network. I don't want that? to be part of your huge network. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I guess because I really value like having things in common with people. Mm. Like even my partners, like most of my partners, we've had loads in common, mm. like to like almost too much mm. in a way where it's too over familiar or like too concentrated. Maybe mm. I don't know. But yeah, I just like to be amongst like, like minded people, I think. And also the value, you feel more valued yourself because mm. you almost have to earn your place in the subculture. Yes. So it's self-esteem as well. Yes. And to be valued by the mainstream, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what that is, but I suppose it's harder. It's yeah. not harder, but like it, it's, it's not the same. Mm, it's not the same <laughs> mm. because uh, it's for the, hey, look, hey, listen, we all love certain things for what, the way they are, you know, yeah. like, in this world everything is so quick and so fast and mm. we'll get into that but but when you have like a close-knit group of people that you can really bond with and connect with and peer with spar with like that shit is like super like 
Yeah. You couldn't, once you're in, you're in. You can't ever leave yeah, that shit. Exactly. And it's so accepting. And also the mainstream, I feel like, is always aligned with, I mean, not to sound, I don't know, <laughs> like like simplistic but like capitalism yeah. which always wants to take from you always and make you feel awful or yeah. make you have to feel like you need to buy into your self-worth yeah. and like especially as a girl and someone that was bullied as well like not really really badly mm. but like i was made to feel ugly 100 percent was taking the mick out of my looks my clothes and when you as we earn, can see ladies and gentlemen that yeah. is certainly not the case <laughs> not, yeah, not in yeah, 20 yeah. 20 pluses I, I actually don't get bullied for my looks anymore that's no, true that's, uh, and, and <laughs> rightly so rightly so but um yeah um it's an escape from that because yeah. you earn you don't earn your places in subcultures yeah. from being pretty or i mean you, you can what do you think would you feel like you're compromised in that sense with, with with i mean listen again we're celebrating yeah this is good things but but yeah. do you feel like there's a there's a level of hey i can't be too pretty though when i'm jumping in the arena because i'll be judged on the, the I, my I've, femininity i think i'm I'm not too. I can. I'm never too pretty, and that I think you can be too pretty. And I you reckon? <laughs> yes, I do. I think that some. If you're if you're really stunning in a. When I say stunning, I obviously mean in a um, conventional way. Mm. So people will find it hard to look past. I think, like a really feminine, really stunning woman, I think would have a much harder time than I did. Even though I am conventionally good looking, mm. I would say because there's stereotypes within the, the demographic of males that have, yeah. that see things very one dimensional. Yeah. And it's hard to get past, yeah. because we value beauty so much, it's quite hard to get past it when someone is stunning. Mm. It's all you're kind of thinking about for some people, I think. Mm. Um, whereas, you know, I can dress my face up or down, I think. I'm not, you know. Yeah, I'm we've seen the music ugly. videos. The music videos a testament. That they're coming up now as we're talking, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, seriously, like, mm. you, and also you, in compromising that, which I don't, you really don't, because, like you say, the balance between... Going out raw, gully, mm. let's go take some pens and go yeah. bomb the shit out of something. To I'm gonna be sophisticated, see you at the uh, you know, the, the 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 launch premiere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you you handle both lanes really well, right? Thank you. Yeah, I, f I think that yeah, that has a bit to do with being a woman too, because um I feel like unlike men, we can't just look a bit trampy or whatever. we like we'll get cussed. Like I don't know how to explain it. In certain situations, if a woman looks looks dishevelled, people will be like, "Is she all right?" Like, what? Not even like taking the mitt. Like, is she all right? What's wrong with her? Why would you go to a a ceremony looking like that mm. or whatever? I th but I think there are places where you can look rougher and be all right. But I feel like I feel like it. I'd be too judged. I feel like to not kind of. I'm a bit of a chameleon. Like I do like to feel comfortable in the environments I'm in. Uh, you know what? There isn't like a one look I have. And I think that's super important to bear in mind. You know what that is? That's knowing yourself. Mm. Because people, not not just women, but because I, 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 I can't speak yeah. for them, do you understand? Yeah. Although there have been examples, to be fair, that the way I've experienced things, my ex-girlfriend, we were in a duo group together, and sometimes I would write emails. You gauge the temperature of a person that you're approaching. It's like, right, who's best to talk about this? Mm. Maybe I'll get my, my, my partner to do the email. Yeah. But she'd be too busy, so I'd quickly write it. And I'd okay. sign it off as her. Yeah. I'd get the reply back. And it would be a hell of a lot different than if I was to have Oh, really? So I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I know where you're coming from. I know there's yeah. a particular response and temperature and play that a woman has to... Yeah, it's not the same for both. It's not the same for a man as it is for no. a woman at all. But I think um, that I... Yeah, I've realised over the years that I also have quite um, a lot of masculine energy. So a lot of the things I think experienced by women, a lot of feminine energy, I don't really relate to. Mm. Um, like, I f I, like I feel like I'm around a lot of men that have feminine energy too, so I can kind of see the difference. And I feel like when I'm with lots of men, sometimes I can be the most masculine one in the room quite easily. So like those kind of issues of like, oh, will I get past the mic or mm. feeling a bit like out, like there's too many men in the studio, whatever. I don't have that issue because I don't know if it's a masculinity, femininity thing. It's like an idea I have, but no, like strength, man. You I sound don't... so strong right now. <laughs> Can it. you feel it? Yeah. Can you feel like, it? Yo, and I've, and I've realized, girl, right here. Come on. It's not really man and woman. I suppose all the gender talk of recent times has helped me figure that out. That like, oh, okay, 
I'm not like a man no. when people have said, you know, give the burden on it. I'm not really like a man. I just, and I've got loads of feminine energy too. Mm. I just think I have extremes of both. Yeah. And they come out in different ways. Yeah. And I'm really feminine. Like, because people are like, no, you're feminine. I'm like, no, I know, I am, innit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but put Hello. me in the right Hello. thing. And I'm like, yeah, like, I have toxic masculinity yeah. <laughs> in the right context. So, yeah, I do know what you mean. And then sometimes there's yeah, a disconnect where I'm like, oh, this person's treating me like a woman. They, they obviously don't know me very well. <laughs> 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 like, you'll get to know, bruv, innit? Like, like, like someone on a bit of a chirps and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. This young man has yeah, not yeah. met me yet. <laughs> see, easily drawn in, you see. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, see. Uh, no, yeah. It's, and, you know, it works both ways, you know. Mm. I, I think yeah. there's, a time and, there's a time and a place and there's a, uh, if you know, if you have the if you have that idea in your head that I'm guessing that you know yourself well enough to adopt and blend in, stick out, mm. work an environment, work a room, be you, yeah, be you. That's such a hard thing for people to do right now. It, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I feel blessed to be someone that I do feel like I, I can very much be me. Um, but again, like even my life experience of like, I've had jobs since I was a teenager. Mm. So I've got a like long professional history of well, as well. Not just work, but also work with people where boundaries are really important mm. and safeguarding and like, you know, really professional, formal ways of working. So mm. like, I do have quite a lot of experience of like different, you know, I'm not an artist that's always just been in art environments mm. at all. Which makes it even yeah. more intriguing. Yeah, I agree. It adds to... It adds to your versatility yeah. if you've yeah done lots of obviously yeah always oh, been in uh, East London <laughs> what the w working no you as oh. in where your family originally from they they they're London yeah well no both my parents aren't from London actually really yeah, yeah neither so of them are from London exactly Go I'm a first gen Londoner really <laughs> yeah 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 okay. I mean I was born in London but my dad's from Algeria uh -huh. um he immigrated here in like the seventies and my mum's from Newbury. I think she's from Newbury. Yeah, I think she grew up there. Also, <laughs> Newbury crew. I don't even know really where that is. Isn't it near Berkshire? Yeah. <laughs> yes, there you so, go. It's not that far. So, but yeah, so neither. Hold of on, she from didn't London. know where Newbury was. See, that's how London she is. <laughs> that's I how know, funny. It's funny. Yeah, I'm so London. I've never lived. I've never lived anywhere else. We lived in Durham for a year when I was four. Mm. I don't really think that counts. Mm. But yeah, my, mainly Hackney. Mm. I'll yeah. talk my Hackney crew. Yes. Um, and how was growing up for you? Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult, like it probably was for everyone else. Mm. Yeah. Um, lot, yeah, I've identity issues, self-esteem issues that I do feel like, I mean, to very just glaze over that because mm. obviously yeah. um, that it do, I feel like hip-hop did save me from. Yeah, 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 for sure. I honestly do feel, you know, like hip-hop's where I found my self-esteem, where like I can do this thing mm. and people rate me. Yeah. And it's not about... Because when you're a kid, it's very standard, yeah. you know, you know, your shoes, mm. how you look. That's how you get judged as a kid. Yeah. And also, I suppose, how good you are at sports. But when I was good at sports, it just used to make boys angry. Mm. Um, not I was better than all the boys, but when I was, when I beat people, I, it's not like I really got props for that. But I guess when people got a bit older, a bit more mature, yeah. a bit less Flowers gender rivalry. right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I kind of found my self-esteem in, in hip-hop. Spitting bars? Uh, yeah, spitting bars, exactly. Graph? Yeah. Yeah, graph to graph. Not self-esteem so much. Mm. Graph was my outlet. I was a really angry young person mm. and I don't think I knew it. Mm. I don't think I knew how angry I was. Really? And yeah, I didn't like, I didn't even acknowledge I had built up pain and trauma and things like that until a few years ago, literally a few really? years yeah, ago. Really? And like the way that played out, I just thought it was me having fun. Mm. Mm. And it was fun, but it wasn't. It's, mm. um, but it was also pain binge drinking, like going, like I didn't have time to even think. So I'd work full time and I even had another job and I'd go out three times a week, all these times to yeah, see yeah, me yeah, before yeah, I had yeah, kids, yeah, 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 yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm out all the time, binge drinking. Every time I go out, walk tracks on the way home, mm. smash stuff up. And like, that just felt exhilarating to me. Mm. Like, just this, un like, it just being a part of this underground network, like the way you view the city is different mm. from normal people. Talk to me about that. Um, how did I get into graph? 
yeah, I didn't have a particularly sparkling career, but like what got me into it, I used to have to get the train from Homerton to Camden to go secondary school. And um, I'd obviously see the same pieces. So, oh, what was If you the know, piece? you know. If you know, yeah. you know. So I'd always wonder who these people were. Sub, Bosch, Teach. Mm. Like, who, what, is, what is this? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Who are these people? <laughs> like, And then I suppose I saw, like, there was a bit of it in popular culture. Like, you know, the characters, you, you could get a jumper sprayed and Camden yeah. Market and all that. And I got yeah, one yeah, of them. Yeah. Also, big up Airheads. Do you remember them? They used to do the cool, the, yeah, Bunny B and them used to do the that, cool teachers. That's who's jumper I had. That's who's jumper I had. Yeah. <laughs> this is 1996. Yeah, yeah. This is why I even met Skinny Man. No way. In 1996. I was like 12, 13. And Yo. I was wearing one of these camp these timelines jumpers man. and he's like, You listen to hip hop? And I was like, Yes, I do. <laughs> he's like, Yeah, you should get mud files or whatever it was. He must have been very yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mud files volume one or something, wasn't it? Yes, exactly. He like wrote it on a on a flyer for me. Mm. I've still got the flyer. Hold tight, order. skinny. Come on. Hold tight, skinny. So yeah, this is proper young. Like, so anyway, yeah. So I, was, I wanted to have a go at it and I and I wanted to, and then I met some writers as well. They must have seen me do a reach in my little like <laughs> like normal pen. And they're like, oh, would you write? And I was like, oh, I, I'm not sure I want to write teach. And they just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? And they're like, somebody already writes teach. But anyway, yeah, I didn't do it properly till I was like 17 or 18 or whatever, because oh. my boyfriend at the time was a writer but yeah once i got in there what did he write what was his right um well <laughs> i don't you know wanna, they're I gonna don't ask wanna, um, i don't want to bait him up uh, all right cool no baiting you might not want me to yeah, talk cool. about him in it <laughs> but we were talking about him earlier <laughs> okay i do know then <laughs> I'll talk. very talented young man yes yeah. um well he's my age it's not young now no. i don't want to sound like i'm weirdo yeah. but, 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 but but you know the, but the past is is sepia and nice and young and youthful isn't it like yeah these things t- tend to merge and join and stuff and before you know it yeah, you're 18 and writing and you're out there doing yes. it. Yes, yeah. Little did you know that you were, have, you know, there was some blockages going on and you were just trying to figure yourself exactly. out, Exactly, right? and that destruction yeah. just felt like <laughs> so satisfying. Mm. But also getting up is another thing that's really far removed from what you look like. And, like, I think I've always tried to escape that. Persona. Um, yeah, it's again, it's persona. It's fa- you're faceless. No one knows what I, you know, no one knows what you look like. That's not what it's about. It's Daft again, punk. it's merit on, yeah, it's merit on um, anonymity. Yeah. Not that rapping is that, but it's merit on skill. Yeah. It used to be. Um, so all these things helped me escape, like, issues I had with what I looked like. And, you know, I couldn't even watch music videos with women in it and stuff without feeling awful about what I looked like. If I looked at women's mags, like I proper had to avoid it all because it could like literally trigger me into feeling awful. So all this subculture stuff mm. is very male dominated, I suppose, which means it didn't exclude a lot of beauty stuff mm. or it would be hypersexual. <laughs> Particularly back then. But yeah. Particularly, Particularly back, back then. then, like it couldn't be less important what you look like in mm. graph, could it? No. <laughs> No. Could it be less important? But, I don't think But then so. you'd have like NWA and Snoop Dogg that would openly bitch and everything on everybody, like say yeah. what they feel, you know, did, uh, what's the word? Um, misogyny. Mm. Is that the right word? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of that going on. And now, I mean, fast forward to now, I mean, we're still staying, we'll just stick to the script, but now it, it, it feels like everything is a lot more accepted. Hip hop's a lot more accepted. Mm. But, but the, the pressure on women to maintain yeah. a level, like the highest level, yeah. even if it's just for a simple photo, is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, look like aesthetically. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's become to the point where like everything is like the level of a photo shoot. Yeah, even just like uploading just standard candid everyday stuff. Um, it is like. Even me, um, I was saying to you earlier, like I didn't used to really care. Like I managed to let go of it a bit and be like, yeah, I look a bit of butters in that photo, but never mind. But now it, it almost feels like if you upload really kind of rough looking pictures like that, it looks odd just because everyone else's pictures mm. are to such a like, I don't want to say high standard, but it's like this it's kind of flawlessness. You're isn't right, it? because it's also the quality of the camera, it's the quality of the lights, it's the quality of your. Yeah, it can't look grainy either. It'd just be like, that's not a very good shot. Yeah. But also, you have to kind of look a bit flawless. Like, everybody's faces have become more simplified. Mm. Then if I upload my real complicated-looking face, it's going to look... It's going to feel like I look rougher than I am, even though I don't. I'd look like that. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, yes, if that that's makes right. sense. Yeah, yeah. It's not rough. It's like, that's your normal. Yeah, but that's what humans look like. Especially, like, my, I'm in my 30s. Mm. Like, I don't, I've not really got, like, wrinkles or whatever, but I don't look 18. There's a, there's a, this underlining, I guess there's a, a play in the back of, Everyone's head. I mean, geez, we're talking about girls, guys as well. Yeah, quickly yeah, jump they, on that face tune and give things escaped. a little spruce. Yeah, they, there's no escape yeah. now. You, you was, we were saying earlier about like how you know the the photos of girls with the tits out, or at least alluding to it, and then repeating the pattern. It takes mm. away from the core reason why they're on social media because they're chasing the algorithm. Yeah. Guys do that too, like, you know, living best lives, jumping off of cliffs and shit. Yeah. It's like, I ain't about to jump on no, off no cliff, you know? It's <laughs> it's like... Just anything for the clicks. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Isn't it? And even a lot more guys now are quite happy to kind of pose. Yeah. Um, yeah, everything's got a lot more vain. Um, How do you feel and, about that? Oh, um, I guess I don't like it. I don't really like it because, again, we're being drawn back to looks and mm. it's what I was escaping. And I'm not nearly as bad as I used to be. I'd be suffering if I was young and now I feel for young people. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I'm flipping old. I don't give, I'm old now, innit? I'm what about old. your kids? Do, do, you, do you have any worries about their kids and what, your kids and what, they, what they'll yeah, be drawn I, into? I do, but they're not really, like, in it like that. They're 8 and 13 and my 13-year-old doesn't really, like, use Instagram. Mm. Like, so she hasn't really got to that stage, I don't think, of like, yeah, everybody comparing photos. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe in one way she has. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Mm. But yeah, I do worry. But again, everybody's doing it. Everybody's using filters mm. that like completely change the structure of your face. And but that, people yeah, use it as yeah. a normal post. Yeah, 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 totally. I see that. And I'll, use, I'll, I'll look at it just to see what they've used. And I'm like, rah, this, it makes everyone look like Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw this. I saw. I, I jumped on Nicki Minaj's page r mm. randomly. She was in some TED Talk type of thing talking about music and uh, popularity versus uh, talent and, and yeah and strength in in artistry. And I jumped onto her Instagram. And at first, what, I, what I, on entry, what I was looking at was like a strong woman, like really talking it up for the music industry, yeah. giving the likes of us and everybody else around of that. I was like, yeah, man. Like, okay, the starship did come down with Nicki at one stage, but like that was her entry hole and if a load of kids got into hip-hop through that way good for her i love yeah. it you know monster is the best bars on of a kanye album and that's nikki yeah jumped on her instagram though and she had those filters on absolutely every single one of her things is that what it is yeah i can't tell if it's surgery fil i don't know i can't tell the difference between I swear it's some women anymore yeah yeah <laughs> i don't know if it's cardi i don't know if it's nikki i don't know if it's nikki azalea Look, all different Rihanna. skin tones and ethnicities, <laughs> yeah. they all look the flipping same. Like, on, I'm not, I'm not just like from another world. Like, it's honestly, a nice, another world. Can't tell the difference between yeah. loads of famous people anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty sad. Yeah, people yeah. used to look iconic. Yeah, that's you'd right. know, you'd know from the jawline. Yeah, you'd know from like, you know, not that people didn't used to get surgery, but it's got to the point where it's just like just homogenizing the flipping human face yeah. into like one exotic look and it's a popularity contest isn't it yeah it is um and again it's just a reminder to me find it you know not a reminder to me but a message for a younger people find that in what is different about you mm. not how much can you look like the ideal no, 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 woman because yeah, yeah, yeah. that competition guess what yeah. you can't win it you can never win it <laughs> can't win it and and it's the same with criminality crime gangs it's like you'd never win you're not gonna win you never win yeah you're not. You can get all the surgeries in the world. There's always going to be someone more beautiful mm. than you. Mm. There's always going to be someone that looks better in that outfit. Youthful entrapments. It's horrible, isn't it? It is. It's We're horrible. We're come out the other side, girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Ain't we? <laughs> yes. Think about, we, found a, we found a thing we were passionate about. Mm. And we jumped in. Yep. Bang. Yeah. And, you know, and it paid off. Like... I love it still, mm. you know, and it's youthful. It's, I feel young. I yeah. feel 20. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like a wise 20 year old. It's, it's great. Yeah. So yeah, I hope I just want other young people to be able to find that and for it. To, but like you were saying, rap's so like, I don't know, ubiquitous now. It's like, it's like I was saying the other day, it's like, oh, I sing. It's almost become like rap. It's not a genre anymore. No. It's, you know, <laughs> I'm a mm. rapper could mean anything. That's right. It doesn't yeah, yeah. mean you do hip hop. No. It's just, you know, a sing, a rap. It's like the same thing. But then I was thinking about this the other day, because like let's take let's take rock and roll and heavy metal and those the genres that are more um 
there's an elder statesman about them. And, and actually, mm. a lot of it, respectfully, because I'm a big metal, you know, hold tight, I'm a big metalhead, but yes, I would yes. say this much, uh, there's a lot of dad rock out there, and I don't think it's particularly <laughs> healthy, and I think a lot of it is because it's found itself in a bit of a rut, yeah. where there isn't any new blood coming in, mm. any new blood is being rejected from the old school fans of rock and roll, because it's not what it used to be. Yeah. And before you know, and I feel like hip-hop, has those moments as well. It's like, all right, cool. They're for mumbling. Sure. Who gives a fuck? They're yeah. mumbling. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, you need this new is blood. what I mean. It's not, for me, it's not the sound like that decides whether it's true and real. It's like, what's the culture surrounding that? Maybe I'm totally ignorant to the subcultures mm -hmm. that are in hip hop now because they're not mine. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, I'd be quite interested to know and to research a bit what young people's subcultures are. Yeah. Like, do people that listen to that feel like they're part of a subculture? Yeah, 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 or is right. that just the mainstream? I don't really know. It's true. So, like, no matter how I dislike it, I'm all for like subcultures and you know, what I mean is genuine culture mm. that is expressing and processing genuine human, like, feelings and interactions. Mm. That's what I care about rather really than, like, the sound. You can tell by your bars, man, how deep you get yeah. into subcultures. Mm. I feel you. What? It will come out. Yeah. If you're deep in something, it will come out in the bars. You can't force it. You can tell when someone forces it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let yeah. me think of a cool reference. Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, references yeah. just come yeah, because you're right. there. Yeah. You did it. <laughs> what the what? All right, Jazz Keener, tell me, tell me two. Do we go with two mm -hmm. subcultures that you're bang into outside of hip hop? Doesn't have to be specifically mm -hmm. non exclusive. That that people wouldn't know you for really being oh, into. God. I don't know. I'm, I don't know what defi You know what is the sub like? How small can the subculture be? It could be as small as rockabilly and uh, or or. Uh, uh, I well, there's know. some things that I don't feel like I'm really in. But you know a lot about. No, that's what I mean. Like, I'm a big indie fan mm. or was like indie and grunge and stuff because mm -hmm. that's what I got into when I was like 10, mm -hmm. 11, 12, 13, like um, Blur, yeah. and, like Soundgarden, Nirvana, um, Chili Peppers and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I feel like I just don't shut up so everyone knows about everything I'm into. <laughs> Really? <laughs> There's no surprises. Really? So, like, I suppose that, and I used to go to metal clubs all the time. Yeah. Like, bef before you were seeing me in the hip-hop things, I was in the metal clubs. Mm. I love a mosh pit. I love the mosh, the subculture of the friendly violence of a mosh pit. There you go. <laughs> yeah. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm pretty sure there's a podcast out there called The Friendly... <laughs> the Friendly Mosh Pit. Mosh Pit Society or something. Oh, it's like, we're all in pain. Yeah, but yeah. there's no evil intent. And that's perfect for me because I'm quite, like... I like violence in a way. I don't know how to explain that. Like I was always play fighting, innit? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I hate people getting hurt. So like I'm bare senses. It's like boxing, isn't but it? But I'm aggressive. Yeah. So if we can do mosh pit where you might split my lip, but it's not a horrible anxiety thing where are you trying to kill me? That, that works quite well. How do you feel about the? How do you feel about that level of cultural appropriation? The killer killer sitting here with a napalm death <laughs> top on, or or the mosh pitting or moshing is sort of the 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 go to thing in a lot of hip hop events. I feel like that's genuine. So do You've I. got this energy in you, and again, a lot of people are angry, but you don't necessarily want to hurt people, and yeah. you've got this energy in you, and just like, how else do you express it? Mm. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. it's a bit yeah. like you know people will shake someone else you know you might land a mm. trick and like you know you just want to flip in I don't know slap someone yeah, yeah, yeah. you're so excited people have trouble with the guttural thing because even with skateboarding it's like mm. there's a level of damage that outweighs any sponsor and a lot of people don't have <laughs> yeah. any sponsors yeah so you know mosh pitting you moshing in mosh pits it's kind of one of the same it's like yo you're gonna hurt you're like, what are you doing yeah <laughs> and that's the yeah, number two um i was a skater again like imposter syndrome of everything because i'm a dabbler but i get passionate about it and mm. i think once you're part of that culture it's in you forever yeah. i'm a skater forever it doesn't yeah. matter that i never got good mm -hmm. really it doesn't matter i did it every single day from morning till night Two litre bottle of water, no flipping food because I had no money, like skating, 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 skating. And that's in you, the people you meet. The I love skating. Hold culture. on, break. I love Stop skaters. a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Reset. Hold on. So how long were you a skater for? And and when you talk about, because that, that sounds to me like this, 
another escapism. It was something else that you were doing. Bottle totally. Water, Total bottle, escapism. So how long were you doing that for? About two years. I started when I was 12, I think. Mad. So quite young. And then I kept revisiting it a little bit. Part of the grunge phase. And being like, Part of that thing. Oh, what was I listening to then? A little bit later than the grunge phase. Mm. So it was that kind of like... Skaters and maybe mixtapes, so it's that kind of like Grave Diggers, Cypress mm, Hill, mm-hmm. you know how it was. Yeah, that integrates that well. metal, hip hop, um, yeah, mixture, maybe a bit of rock, maybe a bit of Marilyn Manson. Mm. Before we uh, get Beastie out of Boys. actually, yeah, and because before, we're before throwing names out, I just want to yeah. add Ash's album 1977, yes, banging album. I don't Do know. Check that album out. Yeah. And Dinosaur Jr. I'm, I'm a big fan of Dinosaur Jr. as well. See, hip, imposter syndrome. I don't... Check them out. Check them out, people. <laughs> I, I know the small things I know. Yeah, yeah. But that's the but thing. Yeah, obviously I, I, I know Ash. I only know those guys. And mm. and I listen to them st- that stuff even now. Like, Yeah, you know. same. I've been revisiting Soundgarden's, um, what's it called? Super Unknown. Oh, well, nice. Yeah, Such a good album, man. Um, that Jeremy tune by Pearl Jam as well. Like, is it Jeremy? That oh, tune? I don't know. I did used to listen to Pearl Jam, but because I often like won't remember the names because mm. I was young, in it, and mm. it was like mixtapes. But um, mixtapes, see, and that's where yeah. the Beastie Boys and Grave Diggers. Yeah, because my it was my sister's mixtapes too. Right. When I was in primary, her friends, she's older than me, were making her mixtapes. So that's how I got onto like Nirvana and Chili Peppers. You just got the one sister. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one older sister. How tight sis. Hold tight, Layla. Yeah, hold tight, Layla. <laughs> you know what deal is. Influencing. <laughs> you know the deal. Yeah. No, yeah, she did, man. I proper looked up to her. She was the yeah, proper grunger, you mm. know, the like, the Nirvana tea and mm. the, um, you know, the military green, yeah, the khaki still, green I, I shirts. I'll fuck with that now. That. You, know when, yeah. you know when Smith Undercut. & Wesson, yeah, yeah, when Smith & Wesson and Black Moon and them lot yeah. came out, the, the whole, you know. I the, was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fabric. And, yeah, well, yeah, there you go. More than once. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> but when they walked out with their like military stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, fuck with that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cold. Because <laughs> it was kind of grungy anyway. Yeah, exactly. Had a bleakness that Britain kind of endorsed. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> we could vibe to this. <laughs> yeah, we can vibe to that. So skateboarding was that then? So yes. you were. So um, I, my school was opposite Cantalows. Not today's kind of loads. Okay. Back in the day, it was just a fun box and a half pipe, two quarter pipes and a back bank. That oh, was it. shit. It, it wasn't all this yeah, yeah, yeah. concrete glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, every day. And there was no one skating my age back then. It was all men in their 20s. But they were really nice, man. They mm. they looked out for me. But yeah, it was mainly park skating. I didn't really have friends to street skate with mm. and travel around with. So I do regret that. Like I wished that there were people my age that skated that I could have run around with. You reckon? But... Would you yeah. reckon that would have kept you going for a little bit longer? Yeah, definitely. Because mm. you go out, go out on my board, go out with friends, end up saying, no one else is skating. You're not, oh God, I've got my board with me. <laughs> Where am I going to put this? Do you know what I mean? Whereas if you're with skaters, you're all just rolling. And I guess so. if your friends were, weren't were into it and you were rolling with skateboards, I mean, it's like when you walk down the road with your, with, you know, your, your newly bought you know, secondhand records. It's almost like a, it's a stamp of who you are, isn't it? It's yeah. a sign of, I like this music. I'm into this. I guess like if you're oh, walking into... I was into... obsessed with that when I was younger. Yeah, man. I love looking at people saying, oh, what records he got then? You know, that that was a real thing, wasn't it? In Soho. Yeah, no, I don't just mean the record thing. I mean like needing people to know what I was into. So the skateboard and things like that. Yeah, or, or like clothing or like, um, yeah, like band merch or just anything that yeah, would... Yeah. And I say, if I saw someone wearing a Wu-Tang hoodie, I'd be like... Yeah, 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 oh my yeah, god, yeah. it's another hip hopper. Like, <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, how can I talk to them? It's not like that now. Now you just Yo, be like, ah. don't act like you weren't one of them people, because that's that's the real that's the real internal you. Mm. We're resonating with you yeah, right man. now. Yeah, man. Also, boy in baggy jeans, I'd be like, oh my god, yeah, 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 it's yeah. a boy yeah. in baggy jeans, <laughs> so fit. <laughs> and then you, she hadn't even seen the th- torso up. I haven't up. seen his face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just talking just about the baggy jeans. jeans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah. yeah, and I think as a as a as a man now thinking back to my boyhood, it's like I was exactly the same. It yeah. was it was almost like it was a combination of the only gay in the village combined with <laughs> exactly <laughs> combined with yeah. combined with maybe we can be friends, maybe we can start a crew, maybe we can be a biggest hip hop ever. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just really, and also just that like desperate desire to be mm. acknowledged like mm. I'm a hip hop head mm. I am like look 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 what I'm wearing like and now I'm just oh, fuck did you listen to hip hop nope <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Completely. Talk to you, Everyone's got tattoos, so you don't have yeah. to be into anything to have tattoos no more. You nah. know, it, uh, and people use that as a gauge of individuality. When, like you were saying mm. back then, it was like, I'm, I'm not just holding this skateboard; I'm doing this skateboard. Yeah, yeah. No one really did that back then. If someone was wearing a Wu Tang hoodie, that was a hip hop head. Yeah, easy. Even someone with mushroom cut earphones on the flipping yeah, yeah, tube—that's yeah, 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 yeah. a hip hop yeah, head. That's a hip hop like, head. 
and now it could literally be anyone yeah. being into anything. Yeah, yeah. It's like totally taken away that like excitement of spotting a. I'm sure there is some things like that. Yeah. But like maybe if it's an obscure band, an mm. obscure group, that will be a bit exciting. Um, like if I saw someone wearing um, gosh, I don't know, an arsonist's t-shirt. Like yeah, that's obscure no. enough. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you'd be like, ah. Oh. And I yeah. would I wanna I'd wanna a bit know want them to know I knew. So maybe it's actually more <laughs> the message it, it's still there. It's for us to know. Yeah. So the message is still there, but like when you see like, I don't know, cousin Katie down the road who's eleven years old rocking a Metallica, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know mm. people have that desire to i guess that's a bit gatekeepery in a way too but it's yeah. not just about gatekeeping it is about just wanting a smaller group of people to yeah. to and relate to and that's a lot with yeah it's otherwise so it doesn't feel like it means anything it doesn't like, feel like it means anything it's like we all like cheese that's not yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and we're counterculture you like cheese too i tell you what actually you know with the beatbox thing uh because obviously I, I played a part in it. And yeah. I, 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 <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> I can't... Um, I, I love the scene. Yeah. But the more it becomes popularised, the more I re resist back and go back. I, I relate. I just like... I'm like... Mm, yeah. No. And also, I remember back in the day, people, like, we were blown away watching you. Just like, how does he do that? Yeah, innit? yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, no. Yeah. And um, I suppose I don't, yeah, really feel that anymore. I guess I'm not really part of that scene, but like... Yeah. <laughs> it's popular. And it, and, yeah. and big salute to everybody doing their thing. You're way better than I am. But the truth, <laughs> the, you know what I mean? I, I had it. my time in the sun. I, bat I batted it. But what I will say is the more it gets popularised, mm. and I like uh, just going back to what we're talking about, the, the counterculture in me, I like, I like either being the first to discover something or I like to be the last and discovering it in my own way. Yeah. It's a mad one. Yeah, just alone. Mm. I wonder what that is. Because, yeah, is like, that? I was thinking if now, if I, like, it's amazing now everyone skates. And that, it actually warms my heart. Like, I'm mm. like, there's a group of girls skating. Mm. Like, that's mad. But if I was young now, I probably wouldn't. No. I'd be like, yeah. I'm not doing that. Everyone's doing that, it. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I would yeah, be yeah. a skater yeah, yeah. because it wasn't, I want to do something. No one, like, I was, there wasn't any other kids my age doing it. I don't know why I wanted to do it so much. Probably, I don't know, American stuff. Mm. But yeah, the fact that there's skateboarding lessons and graffiti lessons, mm. it would have put me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we're just being snobbish. Maybe we're just... Uh, yeah, that's why I feel a bit embarrassed. Snobbery, but yeah. I'm just being it's honest. It's just true truth. And it's not just that. It's that I also I kind of wanted to mix the reprobates, not yeah. someone... I feel that. Someone... No, no judgment. Whose mum is there with their, like, cough, cost of coffee yeah. watching yeah, little yeah. Arthur get his £20 an hour skateboarding lesson. Underdogs, isn't it? Is it I, like <laughs> yeah. a, I like people that are real and that mm. not discrediting anybody that likes commercial stuff as not being real, but... I don't know, man, like mm. some of the most cutting edge music, some of the most cutting edge ideas, the most guttural ideas come from these these yeah. places. Yes. And then sometimes, you know, the flip side of that is that these subcultures contain problem, a lot of problematic people. Mm. Not that mainstream doesn't, but yeah, like yeah. some of those people, yeah, <laughs> really messed up. Do you reckon, <laughs> just going back to the, just going back to the, um, just going back to the, recognizability of like people wearing mm. you know the modernization of like metallica t-shirts and uh, skateboards yes, yeah but like i can recognize a, a graph writer walking down the road i think i can yeah. you, you can just know I what a writer looks like i used to be able to like people would look at me on the train in the tube and they'd go what'd you write because they'll see yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the chrome splat starts with the shoes or they'll see you looking at yeah at reaches it starts, it starts with, the, with shoes. the shoes yeah, yeah it starts with the shoes man yeah. But yeah, you look at and you're yes, that's right, and you're constantly left, right, left, right, left, right. You know what I mean? Looking mm, out the you're, window. You're like this. You're not viewing the Clocking. city. And yeah. the skaters don't view city. Say me. Oh my days! Have you ever played Tony Hawk's, bruv? <laughs> <laughs> Play Tony Hawk's for hours every day, and your mind is just grinding really? and like doing tricks on Fighting. everything. I'm just like, I can't handle this. <laughs> like, Next I'm tail slide. Where? Where? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I can't even do it myself. But anyway, your mind does become accustomed to viewing the city in a certain way, and you can see someone else doing it. Mm. Which but goes yeah. back to your underdog thing of, of being, uh, not being seen in the city as a writer or as, as somebody that's into like the subculture of things. Mm. You do become invisible, don't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I guess. Yeah, and I do have that need to feel special. I mean, I'm a flipping rapper, innit? Mm. Rapper's ego. Let's get into that. I want to be seen. 
<laughs> yeah, because there is the flip side of it. Now, versatility, man. Like when you when I think of Jazz Kahina, and I've listen, I, I I can't count how many times I've either listened to your tunes, heard your tunes, video trailers. Da, da, da. Yeah, like, you do your own videos as well. Uh, like you curate, curate uh, all oh, of your videos. Well, like right? conceptually. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yeah. again, we, we're running these things as we talk. But man, uh, detail. The, de- the mm. detail in your and the construction of your bars. Yeah. Let's get into that. Like, like, what's the formula? How do you... Because there's a lot of in rhymes as well. There's a lot of things going yeah, on. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, I actually quite nicely someone... I, I had an interview recently about how I write. It was for an art magazine. And um, we were describing it as almost like chipping away at a sculpture. Yes. And I really liked that visualisation because that's what it, it feels like because... I'll write all these things and my rhyme books are so much stuff crossed out because it's not quite right. And sometimes I'm a bit embarrassed at how long it might take me to write. Mm. But it's I don't know how to explain it. It's not that I'm being really fussy, but I think it is. But at the same time, I don't know what's going to come out. Sometimes I only clock what I've done after I've done it. Right. Where I'm like, I don't even know I'm doing it. It feels quite subconscious, all that stuff. Yes. It feels like it's just coming out. So you're and saying... And it just emerges, and I didn't know I did it. And you didn't That's know that the like. cross-references are there, and what you said maybe in the previous yeah. has suddenly come to the light over there. And... Yeah. Whoa. Or the perfect reference will just pop. It'll just go, bing, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't feel like I'm really thinking that yeah. hard. It feels like I'm, a, a, like I'm at the mercy of my subconscious to just deliver me the rap when it's ready which mm. is really frustrating because I find it hard to force myself to write and I'll see my peers go in the studio yeah which banged out a tune and I'm just like I've done it but I can't do it that much <laughs> oh, yeah. um, right yeah well, what you're suggesting there is that there's a conduit there's there, that you are there's a beam of light going straight through the, the top of your head straight <laughs> into your mind and then it's re- regurgitating on a pen mm. but I would say time and repetition is is key isn't it Uh, like if you on a law of average have like a hundred rhymes you could probably there's probably a spike in a in the period of in the timeline that suggests that this was your optimum moment but a lot of that is probably circumstantial that's the problem is that i've barely written any more than you can see i mean i probably have a bit but i've hardly got anything i've written that isn't out there's still a lot i don't have i'm not an artist that has bare bars and you get this like that's what you're getting. It's interesting. So I don't even have that much like lyrics. Do you feel satisfied with with that? Is there, there's a satisfaction? I feel to it? there is, but I also feel very di- like very frustrated that I've never been in music in a in a like very time consuming way because I got into it properly after I'd already had kids, mm. and I think that makes it quite hard to like do that lifestyle, especially when you're the mum. Um, but also work, uni, and I don't want to blame it all on that because some of it is just laziness mm. as well and lack of focus. So I'm not trying to say, oh, I've been stopped. <laughs> like I haven't really, but like I just wish I had, I wish I was more, had been more immersed. But if that makes uh, sense. Yeah, I do know what you mean. But to counter that, sometimes there has to be a level of um, restraint that mm. allows those moments that you do do it to be super pinpoint accurate and yeah. on it. Well, that's the thing is that I'm a very, I'm quite a solo, isolated person. So there's not much that I've created that's been in an ambiance of a studio of mm. other people. Where do you record? That, it's, um, loads of different places. Um, where's the last place I recorded? So Jay Strange, um, Revol Records. Yeah, I've recorded time. there Revol recently. I did some recording with some guy recently. Nice. Yeah. Hold tight, so, Michael. Revol all day. Very. Uh, you know that we're family over here. Very talented dudes. Mm. Yeah, so I don't really have. This is what. That's the other thing. I've never really forged strong um, affiliations to anyone. Like I'm proper solo. Why? I don't know. I don't know because I feel like I haven't been immersed enough. I'm not available enough. Like a lot of musicians are spontaneous. I don't know. Maybe I'm just. Maybe this is just my imagination. I don't. Are really you satisfied know. with that? I quite. I, yeah, I quite it like being like solo. Are. Yeah. But um, I am about to do a project with one producer. Never done that before. So I'm nice. really excited. But no, I have always wanted to like, I've always been a little bit jealous of other people's like, oh, I wish I could find that person and they, and we're just vibing. We just really want to make music together. I've never well, Like the Missy and Timberland kind of. Yeah, thing, exactly. Yeah. I've never had it. So um, I've always just kind of 
bits and bobs of beats that I've scraped together to formulate this little patchwork mm. thing. But like, I want to do something deeper, like a bit more, you know, concentrated, a bit more of a kind of like process. So I am about to do that. So I'm quite happy about it's that. It's good. And if it comes yeah. naturally, it's good. I feel like sometimes those co combinations, I've worked with the same producer, to be fair. Mm. As you were saying, I was thinking, myself, yeah, I've worked with my boy James all my life. Yeah. And I'm always, it's almost like my go-to guy. Yeah. But um, that comes with work. And I would imagine that Timberland and Missy, I remember MIA, and because she used to work with Switch a lot. Yeah. And I remember she, in an interview, she was like, yo, the only way I can get him to the studio is I'll make sure I've got... I have to cycle all the way to the shop to make sure there's beers. <laughs> yeah. I, shit isn't easy because mm. there is a there is this level, I don't think it's either one or the other don't actually understand how much work the other one puts in to make things happen. Someone yes. always says that. That's suffer. the thing. I put I I put in loads of effort to my thing, but what I'm not very good at is networking like you see me everywhere mm. i get on with everyone but what i'm not very good at is reaching out i'm not good at collaborating Why? and reaching out i don't know um i don't know maybe there's some deep-seated issues i have with rejection maybe it's like partly that not to get too mm. psychoanalytical but i'm i think honestly that is probably part of it that like what if they don't want to work with me like so I don't want to... Like, some people are always just hitting people up for collab. I never hit people up for collabs. If I ever hit you up for a collab, you must be amazing. Mm -hmm. Because, like... Not that they're not good enough. I didn't mean it like that. I just mean... I just don't... I don't know. I just don't know. I'm just not very good at making friends. Like, the friends I have are long-held friends for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I just don't really... I don't know what it is. There's no wrongs <laughs> about it. Because if it ain't broke, then why are you fixing it for Yeah. But I like being very solo, but yeah. it, it's hard because there's nobody, put, no one going to me, jazz, I need that verse. It's just mm. me, terrible at managing my own um, stuff. I need out, outward structures. Like I could go to uni because there's a deadline, mm. there's a tutor, there's a place I have to be. Mm. If it's something I am just doing by myself, I really struggle to focus. Man, it's interesting. Mm. It's interesting the, how you bring that up because I don't, and again, look, yo, it ain't broke because well, I, I don't think me or any of the public see that in in you. I don't. We don't because it oh, doesn't. I guess you, do you just you see his like? whiz? You wouldn't. <laughs> and but once I got my teeth into a project, though, no, no, then I'm on it. Yeah, one, once on it. it's got to the stage where it's like, let's do like videos and the mm. wrapping up thing, I'm on it. Mm. Yeah. But now after having this conversation, I think back to your videos and how the skateboarding mm. and the street wandering, the graphing, it's in the, there. the sophisticated, the, the, the you know what I mean, like. Yeah, it's all in there. It's all in there. I didn't just do them because I thought they were cool. Yeah. I did them because they're in me and they want to get out. And there is, there <laughs> are, listen, there's, I guess because of your broad taste and your immerseness in certain cultures and hip hop mm. as a whole, it must be, it's not easy to find someone to just like have this mutual drive and North Star to want to achieve a certain thing because there's a lot of things that come Within yeah. the branding of what you do. It's true. And I'm quite controlling too. Like, and, but I'm not also not very good at telling people I don't like what they've done. Mm. So I, that whole thing gets avoided if I don't collaborate, <laughs> doesn't it? I don't have to say, uh, but I mean, I'm getting a bit better at it. But yeah, I am, I am quite controlling, but everything I do is very me. As you can tell, you can yeah. tell it's very me, in it? Like, yeah. I'm not someone that's going to be part of a big crew. It's, I think, yeah. I'm just not. <laughs> big up Jordan, <laughs> by the way. Big up Jordan. I yes, like, man. Jordan. Me and Jordan. Yeah. This is what's nice. This is that's Jordan he's the cat. Actually, a collaborative person. Yeah, I yeah. Built with. He, uh, yeah, video producer, mm. amazing. You know, Jordan Grant eight, films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Director and uh, creator, mm. editor. Jesus Christ! I mean, gives me a run for my money. I mean, I feel, <laughs> I feel so, Im I feel so amateur. <laughs> he's, a, he's my guy. Big up Jordan. Man, we've shared. Days of voice, <coughs> hours and hours of voice notes discussing mm. discussing concepts, mm. and he's just as passionate as me, and that works for me. Pa yeah. Like I, I would hate to work with someone who just doesn't really care. Mm. Just, yeah, yeah. No, I need to know. You know what I mean? Mm, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And then we'll both go and watch. We both go and watch a whole film to like get to like get the vibe or something. Like we will put the work in. See, and Jordan's just a, f he's like one of the most fun guys and honest people yeah. that I've ever ever come across. Like mm -hmm. morals you know, beyond and total, I don't know, so ask his opinion, you'll totally get a yeah, response. Yeah, very straightforward, straight up guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a, a, a level in, in character that you look for within, within the team that you surround yourself with. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like to work with people that do give like me feedback too. I'm not like, I don't have a problem with people telling me what to improve. It depends. If, it depends what position they're in. Mm. <laughs> it can really annoy me. But um, <laughs> not if I'm working with them. <laughs> Um, not if I value their opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and on surface, when checking out your tracks, mm. just going on delivery and execution, like you go, it, like your tone is like, if you could snarl, <laughs> I can actually you know snarling what? on track, like my, while you're recording. My voice has changed. Um, I was playing a freestyle. I did remember the Brap freestyles. Yes. And my daughter went, "Why do you sound like that?" She was playing it on Spotify, and I was like, "What do you mean?" And it was like. Meh. I was just like, my voice is broken. <laughs> like a few years ago, my voice got deeper, and I rap way, but like my raps sound way better. I think they do, but I do. Really? I honestly think I have. I've been doing it for bare long, but I do think I've sounded. I think I've leveled up in the last few years. Mm. I like my tunes better, um, and the cadence of my voice and stuff like mm. that. Yeah, I'm, it gets better. I feel yeah. like it gets better. Yeah. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, big that up. Um, and what's the future? What future have we got? The future. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to be working on this uh, project with a producer. Mm. So what's um, the producer's name? Kurt Carax. Hold tight. Yeah. yeah. I feel like I'm putting it out there too early. Do you know what I mean? When you ain't, you ain't barely, nah, barely done no, it. No. But um, Kurt Carax, who produced my last single, Live, Love, Laugh. Don't nice. know if you saw that. No, check that out and you know what to do. Live, Love, Laugh. Yeah, so he built the beat for that and uh, did a funny video. Um, but yeah, uh, basically, yeah, a label was like, I really like what you did together. So could you do a project together and we'll release it? So that's exciting. Very exciting. Nothing better when a label says to, to have a go at this. And yeah. yeah Never good. happened to me before. So yeah, I just feel, I feel frustrated with myself. Like jazz, just flipping, do the thing, innit? So yeah, I'm excited to do that and have another project out. I've only released one project and that felt too, like, that was quite a patchworky project. Mm. I like it, but, um. It yeah. was all kind of impact because when you haven't got the same producer threading mm. its way through, like you say, yeah, and you feel like, oh, I did that in September, I did that well, in January. It was old and new. That was a yeah, yeah problem partly that it's old and new. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I've, I'm going to be doing that. Um, and what else am I doing? Yeah, music wise, mm. yeah, I'm going to. I'll probably do single. I'm going to do a come doing a cover version of something. Stop um, it. Well, I'm with my lyrics, but like it's a cover of a. Like a pop rock tune. I'm really excited about that. My mum's going to be doing the drums on it. Get she's that out. She started drumming this year and she's sick. Like, <laughs> so, Sick. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And just, I don't know, yeah, whatever things float into my mind <laughs> that I need to put out there. Yo, that's, that's cool. That's what I'll be doing. And you're still writing Shudder Top. For those of you who don't oh, yeah. know, explain just, the top. Yeah. Come on. So this is, <laughs> this is a DTB hoodie from... Um, 2003. And where'd you get it? Where did you get that? HQ, HQ, HQ in Brixton. Brixton. Come on. Yeah, man. I remember when these come out? I think it was a limited run. Yeah. Um, they were. Uh, oh God, see, see, my voice is breaking. There were the the. Do you remember the crisscross yeah, fat laces they had in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've kept this. I'm a big hoarder. <laughs> so yeah, I thought I'd wear this just to honour the. Yeah, it smashes history. it. Um, not even in DTB. What well, do you collect no, stuff? Do you collect stuff? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but that's not the point. Uh, not, this is the, the fucking OG shit. Do you, do you collect lots of stuff? Are you a genuine, um, like, have you got I'm, like classic stuff? I'm not a massive collector. I've hoarded a few things. I've got like old tickets and rave flyers. I'm really glad I've kept. Nostalgic got stuff. Got some old Killer Killer stickers. Come on. Yeah. I'll show you, I'll show yeah, you, that's I'll right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to do a display of that. I collect Averexes. Again, that's waned because as we were discussing before, mm. it's become back into popularity. Mm. The prices have gone up. The people that are wearing them don't really represent where I'm from with mm. it. Um, you know, people can wear what they want, obviously, but um, I would still want them, but I'm not paying four bills nah. for your crusty old no. cracked AV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'll collect random things. I just bought a like little job lot of Red Wolf magazines. I saw that on your Instagram. See it? I, was, I just see things and I just like, I, I have to have it. Like it's that thing. There's one of it. There's only one of it, yeah, and yeah. I want to be the only person that has it. I feel you. I don't know where it comes from. But it's also it feels like, petty. No, 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 no. Because it's a, it's it's what you grew up on as well, wasn't it? Yes. And then I do. I have a few other clothes I've had for many, many years too. I can't remember what right now. I need to pick up but, um, yeah. Destroy. Have you checked out his show, Sir Jules? No, channel? no, I haven't. You'll love it to, for I'm, these reasons. It's, okay, it's, yeah, shows, I will. Show Sir Jules, which is all about people showing up on his live stream, showing them all the classic oh. cheese. 
Yeah, yeah. So sick. Oh, sick. Big up yeah, the story. arsonists. Yeah. Hilarious hip hop group. Yeah. Who were also very about their subcultures. Very much so. They're writers, aren't they? Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, thank you, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. We'll do a part two soon enough. Yeah. Anyway. After the thing, after exactly. the project. That'll be my. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, MO. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> back in, back in the build. Jazz Kahina. Okay. Stay lucky, girl. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, out like him was out of fashion, you know the deal. Sharing is caring, so make sure you do that and don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Life's too short, all right? Stay lucky, people. Cheers, Jazz. Peace.